In my last video, we talked very briefly about um, using float glass on top of your kiln shelf to get a very smooth surface on the back of your finished piece. So today I thought I would give you a quick demonstration of how I did that. I'm going to use uh, just a piece of window glass that you can get at Lowe's. I can get a 24 by 36 piece for $17 or so. Cut it down to the size that I want. I'm going to use some zip. And I've got my piece of glass that I'm going to be firing. I've got this very nice smooth surface that was the upside when I fired my glass. I've sandblasted the uh, downside which has these nice crisp lines and I'm going to fire polish this on top of a zipped piece of glass to get a very smooth back here. And I've already treated my edges and I've already done all my cold working so this will be the last step before it gets slumped. So why don't we uh, step outside and I'll show you how to zip your piece of glass and what that would look like. Outside, good and dry, shaking up my MR97 or my boron nitrate and my zip. Then I'm going to use my face mask. Okay, it's shaking up real well. I'm just gonna apply a good coat. So we've got our shelf coated, as you can see, and you have to let it dry in between coats. Give it about five minutes in between coats and give it a good surface. Um, you really don't want your glass to stick to this. The thing with float glass is that it's harder than art glass. And while I have this piece cut relatively close to the same size as my piece, what's going to happen with this is that it's going to go up to about 1470 degrees with my polish that I do, and it's going to indent itself into the glass. So this piece of glass will be able to be used for the same size piece over and over again, or smaller pieces as you go. But you got to keep in mind that at the temperatures that I take it to, which is about 1470 when I do my polishing, um, and cleaning up the edges and things that it sinks down into it Okay, so we've got this nice clean ready to go shelf and I'm just going to put it right here on top of a kiln uh, Shelf that's already been prepped So I just put it on there and this this is just basic bullseye kiln wash and that will keep my float glass from sticking to the shelf So I've got my uh, piece coated with powder got my dry float glass shelf and all I'm gonna do is plop this bad boy down okay that's it looks like a very close fit but it's already been full fused so it's not gonna flow so we've got the uh, shelf in the, in the kiln, and it's got an eighth inch piece of float glass and a quarter inch piece of art glass. You want to ramp for the total thickness of both pieces of glass combined. So it's not much of a difference between doing a quarter inch with a uh, eighth inch piece of glass under it, because that's like five eighths inches, right? So you don't have to worry adjust your schedule. I will because I like to do things nice and slow because it's a pattern bar, it's been to extreme heat, it's been in the kiln twice. 
If you're using quarter inch float glass, you need to take that into consideration because your base will be a quarter inch plus your art glass on top of it will be a quarter inch. So you want to ramp as if it was a half inch piece of glass. Then when you're annealing, you anneal for the art glass. So you anneal for that quarter inch piece. So if your annealing schedule calls for uh, annealing at 900 for 30 minutes for the art glass, that's what you'll want to do. You don't have to worry about annealing for the bottom piece because it's float glass and it's going to just going to use it again and it will ramp up slow and you can use it one more time or however many times you can get out of it. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so it's next day and we've got the kiln down. It's at 104 degrees. Um, that's cool enough for me because I'm just going to set the shelf over outside of the kiln. Let's take a look at what we've got. Oh, here's my what? Hello, Miss Mulface. Now I'm going to see. To run that schedule cost me nine dollars. So as you can see, it didn't spread outside because it was already a quarter of an inch and it's sitting on my uh, float glass on top of the shelf which moves and both pieces move freely. So I'm going to take these out. This is Miss Mo. She is my studio mutt. Doesn't she look pretty in pink? All right, so we got the kiln shelf. I'm gonna take it out. Even a big reveal here in a second. I got a couple of suction cups that I got from Harbor Freight that are really good for helping me pick up glass. As you can see, this is so smooth. Yep, it's got a little bit of uh, zip on it, but that's gonna come right off when I wash it. There's no texture to it, it is super smooth. And I can reuse this shelf again for anything that is gonna be this size or smaller. There's just a very small indentation in here from where the piece was. Okay, so let's wrap things up and kind of put everything together in one basket. We started with a piece of art glass that we wanted to fire. We had it cold worked and ready to go. It's a quarter of an inch. I took some float glass, which is about eighth of an inch thick that I get from Home Depot or Lowe's for $15 for a two by three foot piece of glass. I then coated it with zip, gave it a liberal coating. I put the float glass on top of the prep kiln shelf and then my art glass went on top of that. And when I ramped this, I ramped it for the total thickness of the float glass plus the piece of art that I was working on. And then when I cooled it and annealed it, I annealed it for the piece that's on top of it. No consideration for this one. I also, when I was zipping this, I don't care what side is zip, which side is the tin side or not. And the piece that you get is super smooth and it is the smoothest bottom that you can get without cold working. So I hope this stuff helps. Come back for some more tips when we uh, post some more stuff and subscribe to our channel.